My name is Alia, as he said, and before I get into my spiel, I just want to um, take a moment to acknowledge, I'm so short, <laughs> to acknowledge all, um, oh, thank you, to acknowledge all the caregivers in this space, because I feel like, um, you know, the mothers, the sisters, the paid, the unpaid, you know, the documented, the undocumented uh, caregivers of our community are the basis of our community, and they raise us, they, they try to get us not to fall through the, um, through the cracks of capitalism, and they need to be acknowledged. So if we could give a round of applause to the caregivers in this space. Thank you. To be honest, I'm like really nervous. Victoria was like, don't let your voice shake, but here it is. So sorry. Um, okay, so um, I would like to thank No One Is Illegal for calling me here to speak to you folks. And I would like to thank um, both the other speakers for sharing their stories with us and for you know giving us insight on how we should go about addressing Bill C-51. And I'm going to be talking about Islamophobia in general. So we're going to think about Islamophobia as, um, as a tenet or as a, a kind of like um, element of um, Islamophobia. <laughs> I started thinking about uh, Bill C-51 when it hit the mainstream. So when we started hearing about Bill C-51 in um, the media, that's when I started thinking about it because I feel like my experiences of in-your-face microaggressions, my experiences of in-your-face Islamophobia were exacerbated. Like, and I guess some examples of this was that you know people were hollering from cars. The service I was getting in shops was not necessarily the same, but we have to acknowledge that it's Islamophobia is so much deeper than that. We have to acknowledge that it goes so much further. Um, I'm from the South Asian diaspora, and I have community members. I have family members who've been harassed in airports, who've been you know, held in detention centers, who've been refused access to this country. Um, and this all happened before Bill C-51. It happened even before 9-11, um, like the case of um, Uncle Mahjoub here. Um, and so I guess another thing that I guess it's important for us to acknowledge is that people experience Islamophobia in different ways. Like, we will experience Islamophobia based on other factors that add on to the Islamophobia, based on our race, our class, our gender, our ethnicity, our sexual orientation. This is something you have to acknowledge when you're thinking about our experiences of Islamophobia. Um, and we also can't think about Islamophobia without thinking about forces of global imperialism. Because Islamophobia... Um, <coughs> Sorry, I have to breathe. <laughs> it's because you guys are so good looking, man. Like, <laughs> Anyways, so we can't think about Islamophobia, especially in a legal context, without thinking about the occupation of Palestine. We can't think about Islamophobia. Yes! Free, free! Free, free! Thank you so much. <laughs>